Hey everybody, uh, welcome to an interview. It's not a series, it's just a little interview that we're doing with our good friend, <laughs> Johnny Birchtold, and a uh, new friend, hopefully, Kyle Gallner, <laughs> co-stars of The Passenger. Hey guys. What's I love up? you guys. I love you, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, you guys were uh, in The Passenger, which came out earlier this year. It came out during the strikes, right? So you couldn't even talk about it then? Yes. Yeah. So That's correct. unfair. It deserves, it deserves so much more. I love this movie <laughs> and it's awesome when I can say that and I'm. it's not a thing where I'm just saying it because I like you both. Like it, I genuinely <laughs> really like this movie a lot. Yeah, we watched it last night and it's not necessarily a horror movie, but it's definitely a, a violent thriller that kind of reminded me of... Um, we were saying it felt very New Hollywood. Yes, like, that like 70s. Like 70s, kind of like, like Easy Rider or... or Badlands from Terrence yeah. Malick. It, the, the plot of it at least felt very much like that. Uh, very yeah. good character study, great acting, uh, so suspenseful. You know what else I thought of was Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Oh, wow. That it's is... Really uh, tox toxic... Um, Boyfriends, not, boy, not <laughs> but like boy boyfriends <clears throat> or boyfriends. No, I don't. I can't in good conscience ship it. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chelsea, come on. <laughs> I know that people do. I'm sure people do. Yeah. Look, there's there's been some fan art. Um, <laughs> there's been some fan art, like pen. fan cams, <laughs> fan cam edits. Yeah. <laughs> pass yeah. Under rule thirty. Here's the here's the, here's the issue. Here's the issue. If you're gonna cast. Kyle in a movie you just have to accept that they're people are going to thirst over whatever character he plays yep so if he's a bad person <laughs> well then too bad you're thirsting over a bad person yeah, that's that. <laughs> just it is what it is i try my best i try yeah, my best so uh, i definitely recommend people <clears throat> check this out if they can uh i know that we i think we just rented it on amazon prime mm -hmm. is it available on uh mgm you said yeah, it's MGM Plus. Plus. I think I think you can also probably get it on like Apple, anywhere where it's like on demand. You can probably rent and buy it. Um, but it is on MGM Plus. Yeah, so I'd recommend checking it out before listening to what will probably be a spoiler-filled interview, just because it's got a lot of. Uh, we went in not knowing anything, and I love I doing that with movies. I think it's worth it not knowing anything because part of what makes us so good is the tension and not really being able to predict what's going to happen which i think is by design kyle's character especially is so unpredictable like he's true chaotic evil honestly <laughs> so, yeah. like truly yeah. really chaotic evil mm -hmm. but it's he's nice so it kind of puts you in the same seat as as randy mm -hmm. exactly yeah johnny's character it, just not knowing what's coming next is right like, yeah the whole thing well here's the thing too when you have a character like benson who says uh when he himself admits that he doesn't know what's going to go down for the rest of the day. Like, how are you to predict how, how it's going to go? You know, it makes it, it's so good. Yeah. And you know, uh, so now we're, we're just going to talk openly with spoilers and everything, but uh, early on, there's the line about like, Oh, we have about seven hours. Who knows where we'll be in seven hours. I expected a road trip movie based on that. <laughs> like that we're, we're going through States and doing stuff, but no Benson who just murdered three people in cold blood just hangs around the town still and even goes back to the same right. diner later on. <laughs> I did not expect Insane. that to be the, the course of the plot. It's a local road trip. It's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they kept it local. I mean, it kind of feeds into the movie's like really creepy atmosphere of kind of dead suburbia. And that is something that I think people who maybe come from areas like that, like we both come from very suburban parts of Michigan, and there is the fear that you'll be stuck there. Yes. People want to leave. Uh, I barely know any people who stayed oh, yeah. where I grew up because there is that anxiety. And so I think the fact that they don't ever really leave makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, a lot of that, like the dead mall, in the movie yeah, yes. is so real like that is something that like yes we have that mall in my hometown like yeah. that is i, I have a, an obsession with I watch a lot of like abandoned mall or dead mall videos uh -huh. on youtube and and it's just this like <laughs> of course you do it's this, <laughs> of course yeah, I do, right? it. yeah <laughs> come on now come on um like i'm obsessed uh but it, it's just like it's such a great commentary on like 
this what used to be like a bustling thing or something of the past still there and it's just like a reminder of like we're stuck here sort of thing and that's why i love the look of the movie too because it's just so like dry and everything's dead Mm -hmm. and everything's gross and weird but like so specific yeah the the cars are old the house is cluttered and just full of stuff there was a moment and i know you guys would have had nothing to do with this but you guys go to a gas station i turn to james and i'm like this gas station was such good location scouting because it is like you johnny you wouldn't be able to run away because it is just so flat and open in every direction and where are we gonna go scary yes we we actually talked about that of like how horrible a feeling that must be of like your captor literally leaving you by yourself Mm -hmm. and you not being able to do anything about it um because it is there's there's nowhere to go Mm -hmm. right and he knows that too right yeah it's such a power trip but yeah i mean that was such a huge part of the movie that that the look and, and sort of the rundown feeling of town and it's it's funny like i went online and i cruised around and checked some to see what some people thought and you get like one camp that it's like, that is like my hometown or other people are like, this is fake. This is like bad set design. And you're like, no, 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 no. This is literally an abandoned mall. Like that has five stores in it. And is yeah, we opera- couldn't do anything there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't a set. That was like an actual mall. That was an actual yeah. mall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everything yeah. was real. That gas station was real. The mall was real. Some people have commented that the burger place looked like a stage because of the way the lights are but it's like the the kind of weird like so that that was actually like a bodega convenience store type of thing and they gutted it and turned it into a burger joint so okay yeah so that location's a real location everything we thought it was an old burger king based on the color scheme yeah yeah Yeah, right i forget if i show if i've showed you our guest bedroom or i forget if you've stay there but i was like james why is the burgers 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 the same exact color wait it's the same color scheme it was a nod to you both actually. Oh, thank you. I, it was it was, it was. so i hope you felt home when you watched the film and and where do you guys uh come from and where'd you grow up were you in like suburban towns like this because like chelsea said this spoke mm, very the true to our town experience is so yeah. real so I grew up uh, right outside of Philadelphia in an area called Westchester. So um, I, I wouldn't say it was quite like that. Westchester was kind of, uh, depending on where you were, it was like a lot of farms in one direction and then um, town in the other. And then Philadelphia was like an hour away. Oh. Okay. Um, so yeah, not actually not even. It was like 35, 40 minutes away. But um so that was kind of more like my situation. I didn't I didn't grow up in like towns like that, but I did. I I shot in Detroit for like six, seven weeks and got I, I had a buddy really, really show me around. And there's to see the difference between like the downtown and how build up it is and how much work they've put into it. And then he was like, now I'm going to go take you into one of the car factories and we're going to go explore. And mm-hmm. you see like you you can just see like what when when industry left like what happened to that place and then you know watching them try to build it up now it's it's so i i got i've i've been to places that are like that i love detroit, detroit by the way what'd you say <laughs> I, I loved i actually loved detroit um yeah, yeah <laughs> i i really really did like detroit a lot like the 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 hometown pride and everything i mean like it's it's a cool spot i really enjoyed detroit i shot a movie called dinner in america in detroit okay. so we were out there for actually probably closer to like eight weeks. This was like three years ago or so, four years ago. Okay. So um, you would have been like downtown and stuff. No, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't stay downtown. No, oh. I actually, I actually stayed in an area that like I had my car stolen. I rescued like a pit bull from a guy who lived next door. And then, uh, and then I like, I figured out what was good. And my downstairs neighbor was like, you're in, a, you're in a kind of an interesting part of town. I was like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Where was it? Yeah, do you remember the name? I, honestly, I can't even remember, but it was it was cool. Like the school across the street was doing like a jazz festival, and I walked over to the, like the jazz festival with the school next door. And I don't know, man. I just I really liked that town. I liked my time there. It was pretty pretty wild, um, but also just really great. I don't know. It was like went to punk shows and like an abandoned mm-hmm. bank and all sorts of stuff. It was a great oh, time. Cool. 
That's yeah. awesome, man. We yeah, we were saying how much this fucking food... tangent. But... <laughs> no, no, I mean, we were you saying said how the magic word. Yeah, because we're from right outside Detroit. So, oh, okay, there you uh, go. Yeah, 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 suburban Detroit. And cool. we were saying how much this movie feels Rust Belt. That's what I said. I was like, this yeah. is Rust Belt as fuck. And then we yeah. realized it was New Orleans, right? That you mm. shot in, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, but we did. But certain stuff did. It reminded me almost of, of, of that. There were some sort of reflections, like some some type of some similar vibes in that. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, cool. The kind of leftovers of like almost industry towns where that yep. industry doesn't exist anymore. And so you get just this weird kind of like aging of the population that lives there. And then, yeah, people yeah. just leaving and. And nature just, taking over, yeah. like yeah. taking it all back. Right. You know, the Amazing, plants yeah. coming through the concrete and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's like that really cool, like right outside of the burgers uh, set or that location where they park the cars. There's like, a collapsed house yes, right in the yeah. woods there. And I was yeah. like, I was like, what is this? Like, and why has it just been left here? And it's like, you see that everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm glad you guys also, I'm sure, sure filming there and just getting into the weird kind of like dread of this movie. I'm sure like, it's neat to know that you really felt the environment there as much as it, you know, on screen, it's like so, I don't know. Like, it really is such a cool mood piece. Yeah. Kyle and I it's... used to go on these, like, nightly walks. We Remember, we would just, like, go on walks in the middle of the night. And just, like, <laughs> yeah. wander around. Just, to, like, see. And then, um, side note, we saw Nick Cage one of those nights. From yeah, what, we... Redfield? Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Time. We ran and, it. Uh, we, both he... turned, we both looked at each other and we were like, no fucking way. Wait a minute. Also, he was wearing like a neon green. Like neon pants. Like neon <laughs> like green pants. It Dude, was crazy. We almost went there when they were shooting Renfield to do like some, some promo stuff. And we would have gotten to meet Nick Cage and Nick Holt. But I think it was like on a weekend that we were doing other things. Yeah, but we could have yeah. all oh, been damn. there at the same that time. Been That's so nuts. Come on. Fun. <laughs> 30s, guys. Um, but yeah, like we, we really were able to um, be in that environment there and sort of like i i just think it adds to the film um mm -hmm. and and it really shows like when just like we were talking like all of those like even in the background of like all the buildings that are passing and they're boarded up and it just like adds to the look that carter was going for like that vibe of just like weird timeless almost like spooky yeah, yeah. well new, new orleans has that sort of gothic kind of timeless feel anyway uh, like it's such a cool town. I, I, I really love New Orleans a lot. Getting to shoot there was a lot of fun. But, I mean, it's it's the same thing. New Orleans is kind of a similar thing where it's like that place has definitely gone through its fair share of, of yeah. hardships. And you, oh, you, yeah. you go through some of these neighborhoods and you really feel it and you really see it. And, you, and it's, it's, it's pretty intense, man, when you walk through some of these places. And then we actually were there and like a tornado – touched ground like like a mile or two from where we were shooting so like when we drove in and drove home the next day we drove in and drove home and like a whole street was destroyed i mean like it was like two yeah. different we had to like take detours work. things it was wow. pretty it's pretty crazy i mean that's you want to talk about that's that's another town that's just incredibly resilient man with oh, with yeah. everything that they oh, do oh my god and i've dealt and also with. like the um like working there you work with the new orleans local crew mm -hmm. um yeah. and just the stories that they have especially from ones who've like been there for so long or moved there recently and and how they're finding it. it's just they have so many stories that it's just it's so rich with like narrative already you know yeah uh, my one time people. there was in 2010 i just stayed a, a couple of nights there on a road trip and it was so soon after Katrina, there was still just, mm. like, evidence of it everywhere. And it's just like, yeah, still is. Millions. Yeah. That's so heavy. Yeah. 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 I think what's, it's interesting too, because speaking of like the kind of isolation of some of these locations, like the dead mall and like this gas station, a lot of the movie takes place in a car. And yeah. I, I think cars too are like a very uniquely like America so dependent on cars and we spend so much of our time in cars and I think it's a big part of what makes this all very isolated from each other and I'm wondering like filming so many like really heavy scenes in a car does that 
affect performance? Because I think typically on a set, you, you know, you can fit the crew. Like everyone's standing around watching you. <laughs> oh, that's if you're point. in a car, there is kind of like a bubble almost, or is that not the case? I'm assuming you're being like towed. You're not actually driving, so you can focus on acting, right? Uh, well, sometimes we were, he was driving. We oh, were wow. mostly towed, but there were times where we're driving, and you know, when you're being towed, it's it's funny because there there are there's the tow there, and then there's like <laughs> ten, there's like ten people who are just like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like on the hood there. of the car. Yeah. Oh, sitting there, <laughs> it's crazy. But car scenes and car movies can be tricky because sometimes I think a car can potentially, in a from a filmmaking point of view, it could be like a trap because it can very quickly be like not very interesting. There's almost like for as much time as we spend in the car, there's very little like repetition of Dang. shots. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's all really was really thought out, and I think. For a movie like this, what was smart is like the car as instead of becoming like a hindrance, almost became like a weapon. You know what I mean? Because you're you're basically putting like a lamb in the car with a lion and they're stuck together and they're smashed into this place and there's no escaping it. So it's it's it becomes almost like this prison cell for Randy where Benson is just like, you're going to listen to every fucking thing I have to say. And there's <laughs> nowhere like for you to go. And yeah. and so I think I think actually the car really helps set the tone and create that sort of tension and uncomfortable just feeling that runs through the entire film. Yeah. I'm also, just, just to add to that. Only... Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say just to add to that too, it was so humid. So there Ooh, yeah, and in good. that car with the windows up it was just like a fog like it was like we were in a sauna the whole time and we're like you see what he's got that amazing fuzzy <laughs> cardigan i got this I big trench coat on jacket. it's so good we're just like in all these layers and just like oh, so pouring high. it's so pouring thick sweat. it just added to that just uncomfortable like we'd we'd like cut and like we'd roll down the windows and we'd... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it just like added to it. It was just like perfect scenario to be able to like capture the vibe that we we're going for. I think. Yeah, and even just the way the cars look, both of them, like both your characters' cars, tell you so much about who these guys <laughs> are. Yeah. Especially your characters, Kyle. It looks like it just smells like a giant cigarette. In there. A hundred percent. It's a driving. <laughs> it's it did a actually. It's cigarette. A... It's a driving. <laughs> yeah. The set dressing on the dashboard too. Yes. I love. If you just like if. You can pick up on any of that. It's just, it was all like glued down. So it was like, uh, it's just so funny to Even be like, oh, yeah. Even a little moment of like, oh, hey, move all this shit off the seat before you get in. It's like so, yeah. so real. Yeah. <laughs> I know we just like cleaned up a bunch of bodies, um, but can you just, uh, if you're going to get in the car, can you just move all that shit to the back? Yeah, I'm move like, all the shit out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was a really smart and talented team, man. I mean, the crew was, was incredible. Um, and Carter's just he's he's so smart and he's got such a good eye and the, uh, it, really the team he put together I mean they all they all just crushed every everything I mean every yeah. set you walk into felt so just like lived in and thought out and offers offers up so much information like what I like about this movie is the script and and Carter like they nothing beats you over the head you you kind of figure stuff out as it goes there's really only one scene of like let me explain what happened to me and that's Mm -hmm. when he talks about taking out miss beard's eye and then the rest of it is like just follow along yeah but those sets like when you walk into benson's house you immediately go oh fuck yeah you know what i mean like you're like i get it i get it you know it's they did such a good job that set was amazing and actually i found out that like they didn't it was like very much like that when they just found a house that was like kind I of mean, yeah. the, the wood panels. I was because I, I love oh, wood like, panels. Our podcast yeah. set is Me too. like 70s yes, it's so wood good. panels. Yes. It's so, so good. I was, it's I really, basement vibes. I was, yeah. But yeah. they made that house so dark and like so, yeah, so sort of butter. like creeping in on you. Yeah. When, when a house, it's like a hoarder's <clears throat> house. Like when a house starts to become like an archaeological dig where the stuff in it is layers that start yeah. to just you can make a timeline mm-hmm. of, of you know that's oh yeah, yeah. 
definitely the vibe of that house. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned, Kyle, you mentioned like not kind of spelling out certain things about characters and about the story. Is mm -hmm. I, I do, and maybe this isn't something you want to confirm, uh, or maybe we want to leave it for like the viewer to kind of interpret, but. Is it implied that your character, like something happened between him and the the vice principal? Like yeah, childhood? no, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very heavily implied, and yeah. and actually so much so that um, the original draft of the script, uh, Mr. Shepard lived, and I actually I I talked to Carter about it, and I was like, I want to kill him. Like, I want whatever happened to me to be so bad that I kill this man in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And um, and he was just like, yeah, absolutely. And like when we talked to the stunt guys and came up with the fight sequence, it was this thing. It was like, all right, we'll hit him three times. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I want to hit this dude like 47 times. I want to mm -hmm. just I want to beat him to death. Yeah. And um. You know, because it's such an important moment because it really is that's the power shift. That's the that's the beginning of the end for Benson. You know, Benson sits there and and talks a big game and 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 you know, he he portrays this this thing and and he talks all this shit to Randy. You need to face your fears, you need to whatever. And then all of a sudden his trauma is he's face to face with it and it breaks him, you know, and that next scene you literally watch benson ask randy like everything's gonna be okay right mm -hmm. and that's when benson just starts to crumble you know that control starts to fall apart and that's when randy starts to sort of take up the mantle a little bit it's it's the it's the power shift and i was like if we don't have a moment here that is incredibly fucking visceral and incredibly like gnarly you know it may not sell as much so Luckily, and again, to Carter's credit, man, that dude, super incredibly collaborative and smart. I would work with him. I would, I would bring him coffee on his next movie. I mean, the dude's a man. He stuck with me. Um, he stuck with me. He, yeah. He, 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 like, he was like, yeah, let's fucking kill him. And I was like, let's kill him. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like you how know? that, in retrospect, makes that one scene that you you talked about earlier, where it is the exposition dump kind of, which is such good acting where uh johnny is relaying this traumatic thing that happened oh, to him and yeah, he's crying he's and it's crying. obviously something that's affected him since that time and then kyle I benson is laughing. just like laughing and <laughs> in the moment it's a great scene because it's such a a contrast of their characters but then in retrospect after you gather what happened to benson as a kid you can see why he's laughing he's like oh your big traumatic thing is that right. like you accidentally flicked an eraser into a teacher's eye when you I were a child that. yeah <laughs> i yeah, had something right. way worse right. happen to me around the right. same exact time and so yeah. like your thing kind of get over it you know and that yeah. yeah yeah and also i can i i you know in retrospect now it is really tragic the scene where they they meet the teacher and their meeting is very tearful and cathartic and there's closure and i right. bet that it's infuriating for benson to not be able to get that same kind of closure because that would be impossible yeah and it's, yeah yeah and it, i love too like him beating up this guy in the parking lot and killing him when you compare it to all of the other kills he's done so far they're at such a distance even the gun he has is like a big hunting rifle which yeah. puts you mm -hmm. at such a distance from you know, it, th those are not like intimate. Right. Murders. This is this time. It's personal. It's yeah. incredibly. Yeah. It's in, uh -huh. it's incredibly personal. Yeah. And there's, I think I, I can't even remember, but even in the sound design, like I wanted it. They may have toned it down a little it's bit. It's gnarly. I, it, I can't I, tell. But gnarly. even even in the way, like when I'm when I'm hitting him and how I'm hitting him, it was like even the I wanted even the way he was like screaming and vocalizing to be just like just just incredibly hurt you know what i mean like it's it's yeah. it's like there's nothing good happening here there's nothing good about this and it just and it was like i just wanted it to be as primal and as as brutal as as possible and i think 
the beating coupled with like that incredible fucking lip makeup and, yeah, and, and, and like what it they did. It almost looks like his jaws hanging yeah. off. Oh of his man, face. they it's did really such gross. a good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. And might I add, I'm, I have a picture somewhere of the two of us. Like, <laughs> I have that photo. But, I have that photo. Yeah. But what like, can I just say though, like watching Kyle get in the zone for that scene specifically was like pure magic kyle i know that you say that you're a crazy person when you but like it was truly inspiring to see because like how do you ask someone to tap into a mindset like that and then do something like that it was like truly incredible to watch and unfold and obviously paid off because that scene is insane yeah (laughs) and kyle just you're you're killing it man uh just even in the horror genre alone which is mostly what we watch it's it's so cool to see you really take such different <laughs> such different roles because like benson is uh he's different than your scream sleazebag character even though yeah. they're maybe on, <laughs> in the same like on the same side of the spectrum but then in smile you're a completely different mm-hmm. character just like an upstanding real good Showered. guy that you're happy to root for <laughs> yeah cut clean like, yeah, yeah clean, exactly. cut. Bit clean probably smells much like better. i don't know this version of kyle this is <laughs> mm-hmm. but oh yeah I, I did just realize uh we are uh technically co-stars in scream since we I, on it. Laptop. Yes. <laughs> I am literally sitting here with the stars of scream five i cannot yeah. believe <laughs> yep. the, top three build the comped in and post stars of scream five there we go let's did go know, did you guys know each other before you shot i wanted this? to ask that yeah no you, you met uh, we were like twitter mutuals process. for a second like okay. we were yeah. yeah yeah i got like a i got one day i got a i got a like um a notification that this guy johnny followed me and i looked him up and i was like because it was back when you could be verified and really? all that shit yeah. and, and i like when that would happen for whatever reason i would get a notification i was like who's this johnny guy and i looked him up i was like oh he's like pretty popular and he makes these videos and i was like oh he seems funny he seems cool like yeah i'll follow him back and then he he messaged me and was like, "Hey man, I love you so much. I love you so much." <laughs> <laughs> but he we we had like a brief exchange, nothing nothing like super long. It was just kind of like a "Hey, thank you, nice to meet yeah. you" kind of thing. And then like like two months later, like yeah. something super super quick, like later, this came up, and then his name got thrown out, and I was like. I know that <laughs> name. And then he's like, wait, the one who makes those videos? Um, <laughs> that? I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> um, but no, it was like, oh, wow. Wait, wait. What? It was just, it was so bizarre, the timing of it all. Yeah. Um, and then we we got to New Orleans and we just, I don't know, man. We just, we just really hit it off. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. I was gonna say you can tell. I mean, I feel like you'd have to have good like interpersonal chemistry or else this movie doesn't work. The whole movie hangs on <laughs> you your guys' relationship and, and scenes between you guys. And it's so like like we said, so much of it takes place in a car with two people talking, and yet it's still riveting and suspenseful and exciting, even though it's just you guys talking and acting with each other. And then when um is it Liza Wheel? Wow. Liza Liza Wild. Liza Weil is yeah. such a great addition because, you know, you're talking about this teacher, it's it's building up, and then she answers the door, and she's nothing like what I'm expecting. Like, right. I'm expecting, like, an older woman, and, and uh-huh. she's, like, in these cute little overalls, and her, her eye patch matches the, the outfit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she's got a dog. Out. She's, like, painting. Yeah. Like... And then just immediate, like, when she recognizes you, that the, the warm smile, you're like, oh, this is the kind of person she is because – you don't yeah. know if she's going to be a resentful she's person. She's very like Miss Honey from Matilda. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh my yes. God. Well, and I'll Holy say shit. Like, that's yeah. like yeah. nail that's on so the true. head. Yeah. Um, if, if Matilda accidentally telekinesis <laughs> Miss Honey's eye out and then yeah. <laughs> two years later came to yeah. visit her. Yeah. It's like the prequel to Carrie, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'll say like Liza specifically brought so much warmth to the set and like, to, like, to the story in general and to that character, but like it really helped in selling that idea of like sometimes like in our heads, the things that happened to us in the past mm-hmm. are so molded into something that we make it out to be yeah. that like when we finally meet her and we see that she's not this like, you know, resentful, 
uh, you know, witch who like wants to burn Randy at the stake. Like she's actually just this like really um, sweet, almost motherly figure. And, um, and Randy's like, wait, I don't, you're not supposed to be this way. Like you're not supposed to. And that's like something that like, I totally get. And I understand like when we look back at our like childhood and we, we look at the things that sort of made us, us now, you can have that moment where you're like, well, do I remember it correctly? Or am I okay to let this go? Am I okay to move on if it's not the way that I thought it was, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you even get the first indication of that at the school with the secretary, because when she realizes who you are, instead of being like, Oh, she, she like reacts with a sweetness of mm -hmm. like, Oh, you're yeah, she oh. yeah. She puts her yeah. hand over her heart and it's just, it's just pure Pity. We loved her, by the way. She was amazing. Oh, she was secretary. She was adorable. She was great. She was funny as hell. I was like, don't you fucking kill her. Don't you kill her. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's um, too good for this. <laughs> everyone, everyone was like, because the, the whole shoot was like Kyle and I in a car, right? Like Kyle and I's or Benson and Randy's adventure. And they pop into these characters and everyone who came in brought their A game and was so perfectly cast and so cool and like memorable um oh my gosh marsha is marsha yeah and and she's incredible incredible your ex lisa when you go and visit her all these people Lupe, yeah they're yeah their performances uh are so just natural and real and they're not like they're not characters who are serving a purpose for the plot and the story they seem like just real people yeah, you, you are yeah. interacting with and it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like they all get their own little chapter. Yeah. You know, like exactly. everybody gets their own sort of thing, which yeah. is really, which was cool. It was nice those days to shake it up and be like, there's another person? <laughs> like, yeah. We're getting Thank out of the God. car? Yeah, Wait, this building is air like, conditioning? Not build a bear. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What was it like? No. Stuffy it's animal called, workshop. It's called um, what business. animal fun like, stuff or something. Animal and fun stuff. I was like, animal animal like blank stuffed animals you decorate. I was like, wait, that's actually a great idea. The yes, last yes, yes. shot of them in the room yeah. with the giraffe with the penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. It's awesome. I love that shot too, of me talking to her and I'm, I'm pointing at her and it's just like, it's just, just like, the lower half of my body and my giraffe's balls just yeah. like right in the camera. I'm like, oh my God. That's, that's, that movie, that's the yeah. other thing that's nice is like this movie does have moments of humor. It's uh, yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, very dry humor between you guys. Mm -hmm. I love the um, two that stick out to me are when Marsha says that it's lucky that you have two first names and, and Kyle's like, oh yeah, God. it's special. <laughs> there's a few times there's a few discussions about having two first names and the very first scene johnny where you're like no bradley's my last name that's her yeah. that's my time. entire life People are oh like, yeah you and Chelsea, rebecca are doing so well on the channel that I'm exact like... conversation where i've had my name put as rebecca on stuff and i have to be like no, oh yeah my first name's chelsea yes rebecca's a first name yes it's confusing so you like, know oh my you God. know like that scene just, just made for you I, yeah yeah it was so weird it was like just ripped from my very um, specific life experience casey casey gets the same exact thing because casey bailey yes. bailey's a first yep. name too That'll so so many emails are always like hi bailey following up on the yeah yep. And, and I remember so. thinking, like, my my whole life, like, before I started dating James, I was like, if I get married, I'm changing my name. I'm going to have a last name. And I'm so Oh, happy. yeah. His last name's Janice. <laughs> there you go. It's not spelled like a woman's name, but you hear it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, well. Yeah. yeah the the other know. moment that made me laugh was uh, when they when you first bring up being held back for the second grade and Benson's like, <laughs> you got to stand up for yourself. And you're like, well, <laughs> I was and seven. Like, I and then just. <laughs> Still, <laughs> but, or I was like, like, uh, um, I was bullshit, like seven man. years old. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. But even that it's now, dope. in retrospect, is really dark because I yeah. always think that Spencer being mad at himself for maybe, maybe he thinks he let certain things happen to him, and oh, well, he yeah. didn't well, stand up. For uh, I mean, honestly, you chills. really kind of, you really kind of hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think a lot of why he does this is very, very much that is he's like, all right, that's it bucket like i'm done he's not he's not gonna be me you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and and i think there is so so much of that and and you know there's there's an intimacy between these two 
in the car. There's an intimacy to those scenes in the car. And and you watch these like almost bizarre moments of intimacy where Ben, can I say intimacy more? Jesus Christ. But it's like <laughs> these bizarre moments where like Benson reaches over and, and like wipes tears off yeah. of, off of Randy's face or tries to comfort him. And, and to your point, it's, it's like, that's almost like him comforting himself Mm -hmm. you know what i mean reaching over towards like a version of himself being like it's okay you don't need to cry you don't need to do these things Uh you don't have to feel this way and and i mean that's that's a big part of this of this journey is 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 that and that relationship between these between these these two you know totally just fucking wrecked and lost people yeah. Yeah. And I feel like for Benson, he wants to live in like a a space where like he can maybe if he could redo stuff in his own life, he would. So he is maybe projecting that onto someone else. Whereas I think Randy represents like living with the consequences of what he's done and revisiting those things and coming to terms with it and not like oh yeah you know rewriting his own oh yeah yeah Yeah. and that's the thing i think i think benson sees randy as the potential to rewrite or to right some wrongs or to do something you know to just to just basically be like you're not gonna end up like me me yeah Yeah. it's it's you know it's a sick and twisted form of life coaching mm-hmm. yeah, like, I mean, it, yeah. Life it, is, coach it is like and, and 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 you know and that's and that's really what it is right it's like that's kind of the tricky part about diving into the psyche of these these types of people is like they don't think they're doing anything wrong mm-hmm. or even if he knows what he did is wrong like in the beginning he's like yeah killing people is wrong but like my end game there's an end game you know he, he's so it's like it's it's that weird thing of of finding the justification in these in these in these characters not that there is any in you know in the real world that we live in Mm -hmm. it's unjustifiable but like you know you gotta you gotta dig into those things and 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 in his mind he sees himself and i think he genuinely thinks he is helping or he's gonna do something good today he's gonna he's gonna help this kid out Mm -hmm. and it's yeah i don't think it's until the very end when just Randy outright calls him out on his shit and uh, yeah. Marsha coming back and, and seeing how yeah. it affected her. That one thing affected her so much. And yeah. I love Randy yeah. calling him out. Like you said, it wouldn't, but it did clearly. Yeah. And I right. think that's when it fully crumbles. Like you well, said, it, it also, starts with the assault, but it also totally like, I mean, one of his last lines is I was never in charge. Yeah. And I think by the end, he fully realizes that where he thought maybe he was and just, he just he realizes nope i never had it mm-hmm. yeah you know? yeah and yeah. i feel like also pretty you, fucking sad it is, <laughs> like, it is. it's, it's a like god and sure. also Man. it's just compounded because you're doing all of this to someone who to, to johnny who is just the <laughs> sweetest boy i'm like the whole thing <laughs> little I'm lamb just, i'm just like woods. oh my gosh get my son out of your car leave <laughs> yeah. him alone Chelsea, where were you? I know he is. I needed you. He is, and it and it was. I mean, it was he. I fucking put him through the ringer, man. I mean, we 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 really did. It's a it's an incredibly physical movie, and like they even had. I shed some blood. Like literally, like Carter, 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 and them. They came up with the term for it. They called it rand handling. (laughs) <laughs> because I was always grabbing him and throwing him and yeah. tossing him around. I was just like, like constantly coming in the next day being like, bruised. oh, look what you did this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, look at this one here. I know. It's like my but, little souvenir, my Kyle Gowner souvenirs. But we did have a discussion before we filmed. I was like, what is your no, we comfort, didn't. What is your comfort <laughs> level? No, we yes, didn't. Don't, did. in trouble. Uh-huh. don't you fucking I dare. <laughs> Please don't touch me. <laughs> no, we, but but we talked about it and it was this thing of like let's just let's go all the way otherwise it doesn't work yeah well, i'm like, sure that we, helps johnny play that character so well i'm sure in that yeah. moment you're scared but it also yes, helps but, yes. it, but it also helps me because i can't yeah. do the things i need to do if i can't grab and it's uh-huh. it's you know like me and johnny i've said this to him a few times now like there is no benson without randy 
Mm-hmm. You know, these characters don't exist. My Ben's my version of Benson does not exist without Johnny's version of Randy. Mm-hmm. If he didn't give everything he gave, if he didn't show up as prepared and game as he did every day, if he didn't allow me to do the things I needed to do, my Benson would never have been able to be the Benson that it was. And like, it was such a team. I I, I mean, it's a true two hander. You know what I mean? Like to 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 the bitter end. I mean, it's 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 a two heavy heavy two-hander and and if if well it's just like you need somebody's you know got to get missing if somebody's got a limp or something like you can't you know what i mean you can't go all the way yeah yeah it's just like one of those things like when you when you read the script it's obviously the script is very visceral and then you find out how you're going to film it you just hope that the other person is game to do the thing Mm -hmm. i'm like obviously yeah kyle is um, I know I've been a fan of his for a long time. I know what kind of a performer he is, um, but he didn't know, you know, how I, and it only just made sense to me to be able to tell it truthfully that we could just like agree to like shake hands, like let's fucking do this thing. Let's get in the dirt. Um, and like within reason, of course, but like, I as safely like, as possible. Of yes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like Kyle in this was, scary like there would be t- like i knew the the thing that was difficult for me <laughs> is like trying to not anticipate mm. that he's gonna come and pounce on me uh you know take seven because i know how it yeah. takes, like insane and it take was gonna six, be six i didn't grab your jacket like, i grabbed your entire chest and like ripped <laughs> flesh out yeah i dude i had like his whole like hand uh, i feel right really bad it. about no that no no one, but see like that's like look here i come from my for so my earliest professional acting gigs was in the haunt industry and i would leave that place with bruises every day and feeling so accomplished if i wasn't leaving with bruises i was like i'm not putting everything into this now obviously that's specific and not how that should be the standard like we shouldn't be doing that but like if you can find someone who is equally as like down to do that and you talk about it and you consent like then why not you know I, yeah. I just think it, it just helped so much. And like, yeah, like I was scared of you. <laughs> it was specifically, it was the, like when you, when you catch Randy with the phone and you throw him against the wall like that, yeah. like I knew that I was going to be thrown against the wall, choked mm. and literally like, there's a shot, a wide shot where like my feet are barely on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> like he, I was up there and, um and that was also one of the scenes that. Uh, That's where I busted your lip. You busted my lip. And I was like bleeding in the take and it was, magic and i don't think we use that take but well, it's all believe. silhouette it's like uh, it was like, awesome but it's tough I, man i mean I've, I've been on that side it's tough mm-hmm. i've been on that side of getting my ass kicked and getting what it's it's hard man and it's hard for fucking it's physical. i just like yeah it just made it that much more real I'm like okay mm-hmm. i feel like yeah. I, we're genuinely like putting in something that works no i I agree. I'm sorry. I cut I cut you off. I apologize. Oh no, I was just going to say I would someday love to somehow stage a reading of this script but have you two switch parts. Oh, oh my god. Oh, that Oh wow. I want to see it. Please. Get my had, revenge. If I ever win the lottery, I will fund a <laughs> shot for shot remake of this okay. but with you two just switch parts. Me and Johnny were actually joking around we're like, I- it's so <laughs> intimate that you could probably do a play of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, was, I had that thought. It's oh, no, so weird. Friend. I thought the exact same thing that this was yes. like a great play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. It uh-huh. does feel like it mm-hmm. could have been like adapted from a play or something. Yeah. 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 So when we do the play, <laughs> I will play Benson. Perfect. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> I'll shave I and I'll. I want to see that physicality. Yeah, <laughs> you shave, I'll like grow my. My my three little like hairs. That I can <laughs> um, I will play the part of woman desperately trying to get into the locked burgers, <laughs> burgers, burgers. <laughs> okay. Oh, me, me. I okay. Relatable. So yes, she needs those curly fries. Booked, yeah, booked and busy. Um, that was like a scene. That they added a bunch of those scenes in. Um, while we were filming, like the the police showing up to Benson's house, like those like interstitial so, moments. Like second unit. Yeah. Yeah, just to like up the stakes yeah it does add tension just to remember yeah. oh the world is still going on outside of this weird adventure and yeah yeah like it's not that, like you know their actions haven't gone unnoticed you yeah. know yeah but that's the thing there is and that's a that's a, 
an interesting thing you said, like the world goes on. That was one of the, that's one of the, I think one of the more intense things about the film is it's like the world is still happening and they're not hiding. And mm-hmm. these things are, are fully going on around them. And, and the timing of things feels incredibly real. And, and like, it's still cinematic, but at the same time, like that scene when Benson decides to go outside and you follow him and he goes and he smokes a cigarette and he makes the decision and he opens the trunk. It's all so it's it's really scary to think of how quickly everything can just flip. Yeah. And like and I think that's that's what makes a lot of this movie like really, really intense man like Dude, that first that opening the 20 first 20 minutes is like truly the first time i watched it i paused it yeah me after, too i it's like literally slow. like lost my breath mm-hmm. yeah it's so very scary well it's yeah. it's very well done very it, unfortunately it's so real life mm-hmm. um, the, and it's very realistic violence <clears throat> which makes it yeah. yes impactful mm-hmm which is like also like that thing of like oh this is this isn't a horror movie this is a thriller and I'm like well yeah but it's also real life horror too yes, for sure. yeah. like it yeah. definitely is that borderline where you know depending on how we feel about it we can be like yes it's a horror movie yeah. Yeah. right 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 <laughs> um I was telling Kyle this uh, uh if I don't know if I told you guys this but like a year after we filmed the movie um because like we filming that scene that whole like the opening burgers 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 massacre mm-hmm. um oh, like yeah. as a horror fan i was in heaven you know with the blood and the special effects and then like we yell action and then kyle walks in and suddenly it's like not fun it's not yeah. like we're filming a movie anymore like it truly is so like you feel it yeah. and um and there was always like you know of course randy's inaction um is so interesting when you're watching it in the moment because the door is right there he can run and and like for me playing that part and i was like you know why isn't he running like what's what's going through his head right now and uh, about a year after we wrapped um i was in new york and i met up with matt loriano who plays chris the bully Mm -hmm. and um we were out at a bar and we got caught in the middle of a shooting did i tell you guys this no what the okay so it, yes, the fact that we were together specifically was like so bizarre. Yeah. Um, during this because so we were sitting outside of a bar and then um and uh you know having a beer and right next to us was like this small shop that got robbed at knife point by four guys and he was noticing it all. Uh, uh, Matt was and I was so oblivious to it until the owner came out and like pepper sprayed them he like chased them off and we got caught in the pepper spray or the you know wild and then he's like we need we need to move and before it like got in my lungs i was like wait really what's going on and he's like yes now and i we got up i grabbed my beer Uh and the guy started shooting in retaliation and we dove into the bar and suddenly i find myself hiding under a table for like an hour because like the guy got shot and the guy and then and they got away and it was like this whole thing of like like in the moment i'm like i, I said matt i was like what? can you believe this is happening right now and he's like yeah and i and it wasn't until the morning after that i that it all came like flooding in and it like truly hit me and i was like you really don't know how you'll react in a situation like that like what why did i grab my beer trying to run for my life like it was like i grab my book bag grab my beer it's like no no leave that but like when you're in the moment you learn so much about yourself and like i learned that i lack urgency and so after that like i was just like introduced to a brand new way of like being aware um and and so then it like fully hit me like but with randy like you just you don't know how your body's going to react in a situation like that and yes. so like that's why when that's i see so you know when i know and the fact i was like matt we're like we're, the two of us together that would happen like oh, especially gosh. after filming that um Jesus. it was like we can look back at it now and i think the guy i think the guy survived um thankfully but um we can look back at that now and be like well thank god we moved when we did really it was him he was like we gotta go yeah. but um but just being so grateful and like 
understanding. It just made me look at this movie so with just clear eyes of like not trying to like figure out like what's going like what's going through his head and like why would he do that and, and all of these things that I had to try and figure out. But like, oh no, yeah, like that's absolutely someone could just freeze and and it's not their fault, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah. the fear response, man. Yeah, like, yeah. like it's a friend of ours. Uh, have you met Katie Atkins? I know she's been at parties that you've been at. Um, she was like so. too many cooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was yeah, on yeah, our yeah. podcast. She was talking about how this was years ago. She uh, was like walking outside and a guy, I think, I can't remember if he like got out of his car. Like, well, a guy like tried to grab her and like, and she just said <sighs> that she, yeah, it was the same thing. Her legs just spaghetti legs. Like she just froze and like couldn't move. She did end up getting like she's fine. She ended up getting away, but she it was this, this, the same exact thing yeah. went through her head, and she was like, as someone who is a fan of horror and who right. finds like crime and stuff interesting. When it happened to me, I realized like the full spectrum of ways that people can react to something like that. One hundred percent. Oh no! Oh my god! Right. Jesus, Johnny, I'm so glad I... you're okay. Yeah, oh, thank man. you so much. It was oh, yeah. yeah, it was definitely bizarre. But um, but yeah, like as a fan of horror, like you, I'm like, oh well, certainly I would do this, or like, of yeah. course I wouldn't, you know. But then I said, I would kill the bad guy, and I would. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Run like, into oh, yeah, the- dude, grab something, like hit yeah. him with it, like. Yeah, yeah I I sleep with a baseball bat now <laughs> next to my bed <laughs> just in case, and um, even still, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I try. I try. Oh yeah, man. you just never know, man. You never know how your body's gonna react or what you're gonna yeah. do. It's crazy. Yeah. It just it just made the movie um that much more um realistic in a yeah. sense, truthful. Yeah. 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 And I yeah, think I went... standing frozen made perfect. So, like oh, yeah. I don't especially for him, for yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 especially. I mean, that's kind I of mean, the crux of his in, whole character. In space and time, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. That was Yeah. I, I It was a gnarly sequence. We filmed that for like a week, I think, at Burgers. I was um, really, yeah, after after we shot that, I definitely, like, every day after we shot that, I would just kind of go back home and be like, oh, like, my brain was scrambled. It's just like, what the well, fuck? Well, dude, like, in between, in between takes, like, and setups, Kyle was, like, asleep. He'd, like, fall asleep wherever. He'd just pass <laughs> out, and then, and I'm, like, you know, icing a bruise or something, and he's, like, asleep next to me, um, because it was just, like, it's exhausting to do especially what you did are you kidding me yeah i fell asleep a lot <laughs> on that <laughs> i i really did i fell asleep like a lot True. a whole lot on that True. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a tiring shoot and then i think also just being in that sweater and the heat and the sun and mm-hmm. like was... being drained of literally just your electrolytes being sucked from your body and being absorbed by your <laughs> your giant fuzzy cardigan uh-huh yeah. Just like spooning peanut butter into your mouth in between. <laughs> Just I know. Calories. Yeah, right. It was crazy, man. It was wild. Damn. It's well, I it was all certainly worth it. I think this movie's so so good. Um, please, if you're if you're watching this interview, go watch this movie. Like it's so good. Yeah, definitely worth the time. Uh, I I loved it. It like I said, reminded me of New Hollywood and just uh. Oh, it, was, it was entertaining throughout. It's good. It's a good movie. I'm glad you guys like. Uh, I love you guys. Us to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank, you. thank you guys for yeah. for, oh for checking it out. Yeah, up there in the pantheon of like toxic male kind of <laughs> companions of film. I don't the know. Lighthouse. Like the lighthouse. There you go. <laughs> yes. Dudes rock. Um... <laughs> dudes, dude, dudes be crazy. Yeah, so definitely check this out. Uh, anything else you guys want to say? Any, any? Thank you to everyone who has watched so far. Yeah. Um, we couldn't really say that for a long time uh, because of the strike, but like we definitely saw all the things that you guys were tweeting at us and the fan art. We love the fan art. Um, I just love seeing uh, cartoon Benson in that fuzzy sweater. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's so yeah, good. I go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. And, uh, and yeah, like really thank you. And thank you guys for watching and having us and talking with us. I love you guys so much. Oh, we, we love, love you too, bud. You. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah, and what Johnny said to everybody who's watched the movie and everybody who's talked about the film and told people to go check it out. You know, we appreciate it. It was really hard not being able to promote this thing. So thank you. And, and thank you guys for real for having us and giving us a, a platform to to talk about our movie and, and 
help push it out into the into the universe a little bit more. Happy to do so. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And we look forward to seeing the whatever you guys do next because you're both killing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, yeah, hey, go watch that movie and thanks for watching this video.